Do you know, I don't know if you've ever done any kind of navigation offshore, sailing and so forth, but one of the tools that are actually used to navigate, I mean, years ago, these were like the sextant, and you'd look up and measure the stars and angles and so forth. But now there's a thing called Loran. And Loran is really cool because what Loran does is it allows you to actually pinpoint your location exactly. And it's really amazing how it works. But behind it actually is the theory of hyperbolas. Who would have guessed it? But it's true. And here's basically how it works. You have two receiving, uh, so here, here's an example right here. So you have two stations here where they are transmitting radio signals. So bloop, 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 and so forth. And then uh, a vessel out here what, that has Loran could pick up on this and actually measure how much difference there is in time between receiving this signal and this signal. You see, of course, if you think about it, if you're far away from something, it takes a longer to receive the same signal as it would from here. So these guys are pulsing at the exact same rate. But since this boat is further away from T1, actually, it's going to arrive at a different time. This is going to arrive, it's going to be like sort of bing, boom, bing, boom. Bing boom, even though they're being sent out as bing boom, bing boom, bing boom at the same time. Boop, 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 boop. It's being received in as boop, 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 because this one gets there first. It makes sense. Well, it turns out just knowing that difference in time of receiving these signals, you can actually figure out what kind of hyperbola you live on. And in fact, this will tell you what hyperbola you live on. And then, in fact, if you do this with two other signals, you can find out what hyperbola you live on there and pinpoint your exact location. So to illustrate this, let's consider the following issue. Suppose we have a boat, and it's positioned along the coast, and we have two radio transmitter beacons that are transmitting, and they're 250 miles apart. Okay, So that means that the distance from the center out to here would be 125 miles, and similarly this distance would be 125 miles in a negative direction. Okay, And then we have a, a boat out here, and then we're, receive, we're sending out these signals simultaneously. Beep. But of course, the ship, and you can see where it's located, is receiving it. Bloop, 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 bloop. They're a little bit off. And suppose that the ship is receiving T2's radio signal 200 microseconds after it receives the signal from T1. So there's a difference of 200 microseconds between these things. Now, uh, I'll tell you how fast that radio signals actually travel. They travel 0.186 miles per microsecond. So actually really, really fast. These radio signals are going really, really fast. But that's their rate. The first question is, can you find the equation for the hyperbola that have foci at these two points, T1 and T2, where these transmitters are, that's where the foci are, and in fact contains this ship? So in fact, what I want to find is the following. I want to find the hyperbola. So it would sort of look like this. Draws really nicely. Some hyperbola out there that that ship lives on, and these are the foci, and I want to see if I can find it. Well, let's see if we can actually pull that off. First of all, remember what it means to be a hyperbola. It means that from the foci, any point on the hyperbola has the property that this length minus that length is always constant. So the difference is always constant. And that difference in time we know is 200 microseconds. So what's his actual distance in distance in miles? Well, we can figure that out because we know that distance equals rate times time. So we know that distance equals rate times time. The distance is what I want. The rate, I told you how many uh, miles per microsecond these sound waves travel. It's 0.186. And the time difference, I remind you, was 200. And so what does this equal? What well, if you multiply this out? you'll see 37.2 miles. So that's the difference in distance between this length and that length, 37.2 miles. Now let me try to draw you a picture of this, just with the facts that we need here. So we have these foci way out here. And we know that this distance right here, by the way, is 125 miles. And then the hyperbola somehow lives like this, somewhere in there. And I know that the difference, if you pick any point on there, this length minus that length is always going to equal 37.2 miles. Well, let's think about what happens if I look right here 
at this point. Well, what do I know? I know that if I take this length right here, now you've got to watch me, that length right there, and I subtract this length right here, that difference will be, in fact, 37.2 miles. Because no matter where I am, that distance from this minus that distance from this will always equal the same, 37.2. But look, this distance here is equal to that distance here. So if I take this whole distance and subtract that, it's the same thing as taking this whole distance and subtracting this. So in fact, this distance right in here, this transversal thing, actually must have length 37.2 miles. And if this whole thing is 37.2, that means that this would be half of it. So in fact, this is located at half of 37.2, which is 18.6 miles. And so that actually gives me not only the intercept, but also the value that goes under the x squared, because this thing is actually a. So it means that I now have what a squared is. So I now see that I have x squared divided by a squared, which would be 18.6 squared. And that would be 345.96. It's about 18 squared, because it's, a, it's x squared over a squared. Now I've got minus y squared over b squared equals 1. Now I have to admit, I don't know what b squared is. That's a problem. But I do know where the, where, the, where the focus is, one of the focuses. And so remember how the formula for focus. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, I know c squared. That's going to be 125 squared. So that's going to be 125 squared. And I know that equals a squared, which is this number right here, or just 18.6 squared, plus b squared. So what that means is that b squared equals, if you just subtract these things, uh, let's see, I think it would be 15,279.04. So that's b squared. So what's the formula for this thing? The formula for this ellipse that we know, I'm sorry, this um, hyperbola that we know um, this boat is on would have the following shape. The formula would be x squared over 340. 45.96 minus y squared over b squared, which is this. So that's going to be 15,279.04 equals 1. So there is the equation. There is the equation. OK, let me ask you a follow-up question on this. Suppose, looking back at this picture, suppose that I tell you that the ship is 100 miles east of this center axis, this y-axis. So in fact, the ship is located sort of 100 miles this way. Can you tell me how far offshore the boat is? Well, sure. Because if I know this is the y value, I'm, 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 oh, I'm sorry, wait, hold on a second. If the ship is 100 miles east, that means that it's 100 miles this way. That's the x value. So it's 100 miles this direction. And I want to know this. This is a y value. So if I know the x, can I find y? Sure. Here's an equation. I know x. That's 100. I can plug in 100 for x and solve for y. So in fact, this is really easy to do. All I've got to do is the following. All I've got to do is plug in 100 for x, because I know it's 100 miles from the y-axis here. So if I take x and square it, that's now going to be 100 with a couple of extra zeros divided by 345.96 minus y squared over that big number equals 1. And now to solve that, I just bring all these constants over and so on. And what I would see is the following. If you solve this out, uh, what you'd see, let me just make sure I'm doing everything correctly here. I want to be really happy with this. Because I think actually there may be a little mistake. Let's actually work this out carefully. So I see y squared over. 15,279.04 equals, and it'll be 1 from that number. So let's see what that is. So if I turn this on, what I see is the following. Whoops. OK, what I see is the following. I take 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and divide it by 345.96. I take that, and I take that minus 1. And that equals 27.9 something. And I multiply that 
by this number, so 15279.04. And I see that y squared will equal around 426362.7 something. And so if I take square roots of that, so the square root, oops, 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 clear. If I take the square root of 426362.7 something, we get that y would equal 652.9 miles. So what that means is this ship is about 653 miles offshore. This distance right here is about 653 um, miles. Okay, good luck, good work, and uh, clear sailing. See you soon.